Hi, today we are going to talk about principle of continuum in fluid mechanics and uh, application in atmospheric sciences. At the end of this video, you should be able to answer the question, why is it that we are not talking about molecules when we talk about atmosphere, but we consider atmosphere to be one continuous substance and we are not concerned about uh, the finest scale structure of that substance. We will start by explaining what is air. Uh, as we all know, air is a fluid. And uh, when we say fluid, we mean uh, that uh, the air uniformly occupies the container we put the air inside. For example, in this room, air uniformly occupies this room, uh, the volume of this room, which means if I am, let's say, in that corner over there and I want to breathe, there is as much air over there as there is here because it's uniformly distributed. Another definition of uh, uh, fluids is that they continuously deform as we apply some force on them. So as you can see, I have a spaghetti here, very nice Italian spaghetti. And I, if I apply force to this spaghetti, it will continuously deform until poof, it broke. So at the end of the day, there was a discontinuity and therefore, for example, it is not a fluid like air. Now, air at the same time, we also know is made out of small molecules. And for the purpose of this, vid this video, we can represent these molecules uh, and consider them as very small, indestructible little balls of matter. Uh, so, for example, when we breathe, uh, the composition of air or these molecules is about 78% is nitrogen, about 21% is uh, oxygen, and about 0.9% uh, or so is uh, argon. So 99.9% .9 are these three gases, nitrogen, oxygen, and argon in respective order. Incidentally, this also means that next time when you go to dealership and they offer you 200 bucks to fill up your tires with nitrogen, you can tell them that you understand atmospheric sciences enough to know that almost 80% of air that is already in these tires is nitrogen. So thanks, but no thanks. Okay, so now when we understand more closely what air is, let's try to figure out what it actually means <clears throat> Uh, when we say that air is continuum uh, and uh, kind of qualita quantitatively derive this concept. To do so, we will have to imagine uh, how air looks like at the smallest scale. So here I have zillions and zillions of molecules of air and they all now, I would have to plot this for 300 years to have a scale or, or a number of molecules that is really there in, in real air. But just imagine there is way more than what I plotted. And what they are doing is they are moving in any single direction, right? So maybe this one is going in this direction, this one is going in that direction, this one is going here, uh, and so on. So let's say this guy is going in this direction and there is another molecule right here that is going in the opposite direction. You can see from this schematic that these two will collide. And maybe this one is going in that direction and this one is going in the opposite direction. So these two will also collide. So what we can conclude from this figure is there is some quantity and let's call it a lambda that is the mean path that each molecule takes before colliding with another molecule. And it happens that in atmosphere at the sea level, this lambda is about 10 to the power of minus 7 meters. So each molecule takes about 10 to the power of 7 meters before colliding with another molecule. Now, we also know that we can define density of material as mass of that material over volume. And now I will calculate the density of air for different volumes. So what I will plot here schematically is on the y-axis I will have a density and on the 
x-axis I can have volume but I will take a cube okay I will have this cube it's a three-dimensional object that has side L width L and uh, height L so the volume of this cube is L to the power of 3 as we can see L times L times L so instead of putting volume here I can just put a length or the side of this cube and now I put this cube here okay I'll put this in two dimensions but imagine please that this is in three dimensions okay and now for this cube or this container it's easier to say container for this container I calculate the density and I get some number now I increase container a little bit okay the volume increases uh, to the power of 3 and I again calculate density and I get some other number now I increase even more and I get another number maybe here there was a lot of molecules it just happened uh, some small scale fluctuation so my density increases so I hope what you can see from this uh, figure is uh, that at very small scales the density will fluctuate a lot I will get very big fluctuations of density but as the size of my container increases I am getting more and more molecules included and then this curve smoothens out kind of <clears throat> so there will be some length and let's call it LC L critical at which it really doesn't matter if my container is this big or a little bit bigger I will get the same value of density and this is the assumption of continuum this regime over here is when we can say that air is a continuum this is very micro scale at micro scales we cannot say that air is continuum because it really depends on uh, the small scale fluctuations here all these small scale fluctuations smoothen out and we can say air is continuum at the same time if we take too big volume we can taper this off because we know that for example uh, density decreases with height in the atmosphere so if we take uh, container that is hundreds of kilometers then we can take into account these large-scale fluctuations and uh, <clears throat> then again uh, it is not necessary uh, necessary that uh, the air is in this regime over here so this is our continuum continuum regime over here okay so the logical question is to answer now is how big is this LC in air it turns out that this LC is related to this lambda which is the mean free path of molecules and it is around 100 lambda it turns out and this is the criterion for air being continuum okay this can be expressed in another way we say kn is lambda over l and this quantity is known as a Knudsen number named after a Danish physicist Martin Knudsen so if this number is smaller than 0 0.01 then we are in the regime of continuum at the end uh, of this video let's consider some of the typical uh, uh, phenomena that we are interested in the atmosphere and calculate Knudsen number for that for these phenomena to see if we are in this regime of uh, continuum uh, the easiest probably is to take human body and uh, for example a good container in human body are lungs that we use to breathe uh, and uh, so I would need to measure for example the characteristic length of my lungs and it just happened I don't know that I have here a meter I usually don't have it here but it just happened so if I measure my lungs or rather my chest it's about 30 centimeters so if I make the following table if I say here uh, I have container 
I have characteristic size, size of that container, I have mean free path of molecules, and then I cal calculate Knudsen number, and I ask, is it smaller than 0 0.01? Then I can see for lungs, characteristic length is 0 0.3 meters, mean free path is 10 to the power minus 7 meters, Knudsen number is then 3 times 3 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 7, and this is way, way smaller than 0 0.01, so we are good. Air is continued. Now, let's say somebody, somebody can say, yeah, but you breathe through nose. So if I measure the nostril of my nose, it's about one centimeter. It's about one centimeter, which is 0 0.01 meter. This is the same. And then we get 10 to the power minus five. Still way, way smaller than 0 0.01. We are good to go. To conclude with, let's take atmosphere at 100 kilometers height. And let's take container one meter. So a cube of one meter. Now the mean free path is much, much smaller over there because, uh, sorry, bigger, because the density is smaller. And it turns out that it is about 16 centimeters, 0.16 meters. And then when we calculate this number, it's one, it's uh, 0 0.16, and this is larger than 0 0.01. So we cannot conclude that uh, one meter box is sufficient. <clears throat> so at the end of this, this video, you learn why can we uh, consider uh, air to be continuum in the everyday phenomena. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.